Hey everyone, it's Dr. Jen. Sorry for a little bit of the technical issues today. It's a little bit of a crazy day. Happy spring um, to everyone. It's a little bit crazy, right? Because here in the Northeast, we're having this crazy Northeastern snowstorm. So I'm actually home today, but I wanted to do my What's Up Wednesday because I think it's a really important topic this week. And I am talking all about poison prevention tips. It is actually National Poison Control Week. Um, and it's so important to speak to parents about um, poisons and how to prevent them um, in case you don't know. Um, let me give you a little bit of information about myself and then we'll sort of jump right in. But uh, my name is Dr. Jen, hi there. I'm actually um, a spokesperson for the American Academy of Pediatrics and that's where these tips are coming from today um, as well as this, these same tips that I tell my patients as well too. I am an assistant clinical professor of pediatrics at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, and I have been in private practice for over 20 years, caring for kids from newborns all the way through young adulthood. I've written two parenting books, Good Kids, Bad Habits, and um, The Smart Parents Guide to Getting Your Kids Through Checkups, Illnesses, and Accidents. And now, right now, I have my new e-course, which is a comprehensive video course for parents called Pediatrician in Your Pocket, which goes over everything about caring for your baby from peeing and pooping and sleeping and especially a lot about safety. So we're gonna sort of touch at the tip of the iceberg today about uh, prevention of poisons in kids today, but there's so much more. If you wanna know more information, you can go to drjen.com um, and check out Pediatrician in Your Pocket as well too. So, um, as I said, this is National Poison Control Week, and all on Instagram and my Facebook, I've been giving tips all week long about how to prevent poisonings um, in children. And as we know, you know, really they're all um, mainly accidental um, ingestions and poisonings. But I think it's important to know that over three million children over um, under the age of five end up being in contact with some type of poisoning. Um, in their lifetime under the age of five. And that you know, can be devastating um, or it can be mild, but obviously we never want it to happen. And it's really, um, as I said, I'm really vigilant about talking about safety to parents, especially in young children, because in kids between the ages of one to 14, um, accidents are the number one cause of death. And you know, by saying that, I'm not trying to scare you at all, but I'm really just trying to give you the statistics and the information. Um, so accidents um, in young children, even more than birth defects, heart disease, cancers, violence, all that combined um, is not as close to deaths caused by accidents. So that's why it's so important to be um, vigilant about uh, caring for your child, especially when they're young, um, and so that accidents don't occur. So today I really want to take the time to talk about poisonings, but how we can prevent them and how we can prevent accidents. Because sometimes people say to me, well, it's an accident. There was nothing I can really do about it. Accidents just occur. But you know what? That's actually not really the case. We can decrease the risk of accidents. Um, accidents, you know, happen when we're careless. And that's not to put blame on everyone. I'm a mom, a busy mom with three kids, and I work as well, too, as you know, as a pediatrician. Um, but right, we get um, stressed out, we don't have sleep sometimes, we're running around, we're multitasking. Um, so all those things were out of um, our ordinary routine is another reason why accidents occur. And you know, we're always vigilant about um, when our kids are either in daycare or nursery or there's um, a babysitter or someone taking care of them and you should, but you know, the statistics show that accidents occur more often when parents are with kids, um, when it's after school, when it's evening, when it's holidays, when it's weekends. So if you put all that together, it's really because you're outside your element of the normal day-to-day -day routine that kids have and that you have. And it's always just what I hear from patients saying to me, it was just that one time I never do this, it just happened. And so I just want to plant that seed in your head that whenever there's stress going on, or there's a difference um, in the situation, that's a higher risk for an accident to occur. So again, not playing any blame or anything, but really just uh, knowing that information and sort of being um, more aware that when things change, um, when your child is upset, when they're stressed, when you're busy, when it's a holiday, when you have to rush to get to grandma's house, you have extra people, there's parties, all those situations are more setups for accidents to occur. So I just wanted to give that information first. So moving forward, let's talk a little bit more about 
um, preventions of poisonings um, in the home. And I guess to start with, um, just because this came up yesterday because I had an issue um, with my furnace and the first thing that the um, guy who was fixing it asked me was, do you have carbon monoxide detectors? And I said, yes, I'm a pediatrician. Um, it's so important to me. I definitely have them and we check them. And so the most important thing is yes, to have carbon monoxide detectors on every floor of your home and to really make sure they're working. And the reason why is because carbon monoxide, you can't smell it, you can't taste it. Um, often there really aren't any symptoms. Um, there can be headache and dizziness, but often it's too late. We don't really know until the carbon dioxide level is high, uh, excuse me, the carbon monoxide level is high, um, that there's an issue and that, um, you know, can obviously um, be very serious or even death in children um, right away because it usually happens at night. So you want to make sure that you have carbon monoxide um, detectors in your home. There's different ones with batteries, there's ones that you plug in, but just make sure they work, whichever ones that you do get. And again, you know, carbon monoxide, um, one thing that people may not know is, but for example, if you have like a dryer, if there's a lot of lint, if it's build up, if there's blocking of the venting system, um, space heaters, um, oftentimes um, is carbon monoxide. Sometimes in the winter, people turn the car on, either to heat it up, to put the air conditioning on. Um, a child may go into the garage, there could be carbon monoxide there. Sometimes the door may be unlocked and you don't know that a kid um, is playing hide and seek and they may go in the car as well too. Um, so you just really have to be careful um, and make sure you do have carbon monoxide detectors and many of them. Which also then um, brings me to the next point of obviously smoke detectors as well too. So there's combination, you can buy smoke detectors that have carbon monoxide uh, testing as well too. But yes, you need carbon, um, you need smoke detectors on every floor. Um, make sure that they are working, that you do change the batteries at least twice a year, but I think it's better to do it even more often. Um, and to have a plan um, for your children. And each year as they grow, you know, what's the plan? What's the escape route? What's the best way for kids to leave the room? Who's going to do what? So I think that's really important because again, obviously under high stress situations, um, things became more difficult um, and scarier. So have that plan because when it's in place, it's much easier to implement and to carry out when needed. So um, that's carbon monoxide detectors as well as smoke detectors, always really, really um, important. And then another thing that's really common is medication um, errors. And that's either medication errors or medication overdoses. Um, and I wrote this on my Instagram, if any of you guys saw me, but grandma's purse and grandma's big bag, right? Grandma always comes with her bag of tricks and there's lots of toys and there's presents and there's, it's big and kids like to go into bags and purses. So whenever, um, grandma, it doesn't have to be grandma, I'm just saying grandma, I'm not singling you out, but anytime you have friends or relatives or anyone over, make sure that they place their bags high up or away from where children, toddlers, infants um, can be crawling around and going into their bag because they may think that um, it's candy um, and that can obviously um, be dangerous um, if a child ingests medications. So, right, so um, if you think of, of elderly people, they may keep their pill in uh, pill boxes that's not labeled, so you may not even know what the medicine is, so that can even be more harmful. Um, again, we tell parents to try to keep medicines in childproof um, containers that they come in, which can be really helpful, but again, it's nothing I'm going to tell you, and you probably know if you're a parent, nothing is really childproof. They can figure out how to open it. But when it comes to elderly, they may not even have childproof because they may have arthritis or they may have difficulty um, opening bottles in the first place. So they may not have um, containers like that. So you want to make sure that um, grandma's purse or anyone else who brings in um, a bag, that it's in an area stored away so um, baby or infant or child cannot uh, get to it and make a mistake um, and ingest those medications as well. And so the medications that, you know, pretty much any medication obviously that a child shouldn't have can be dangerous, but really things like blood pressure or antihypertensive medications for high blood pressure, um, anti-anxiety, depression medicines, psychiatric medicines, um, iron pills, vitamins can be serious um, if ingested. Um, with children and even pain medications, especially Tylenol, even though again, it's an over-the-counter medicine, um, Tylenol can be very toxic and taken uh, to the liver and if it's in uh, too big of doses. So it's important uh, to make sure that medications, we talked about um, them being in a grandma's bag, but also in general, always to store medications 
high up. And I'm, as you know, kids like to climb and, and you know, they're very rambunctious and they're learning and they're from their environment. So they do climb. So you one have to make sure it's extremely high where they can't get to the medications and also that there are locks that they can't get in um, to if it's a medicine cabinet as well too. Um, another good tip to remember is always um, if you have medications, once you don't need them anymore, if, if it's an antibiotic that you had extra or it's a pain med, especially a pain medicines um, or a narcotic, you want to make sure you get rid of them. Um, even, you know, you don't keep them until they're expired. Just if, you, if the doctor said you don't need them anymore, you need to dispose of them. Um, I'm going to tell you, don't dispose of them down the toilet because obviously and that actually can get into the water supply and that's toxically not good for the environment either. One of the best ways to get rid of medications is you can either um, dump it into coffee grounds, mix it up, or you can also put it in cat litter and then um, dispose of it that way in, in the garbage so this way no one will go through it um, and they won't get the medicines. There's also, you can speak to your pharmacist. There's also other ways of disposing of medication, but please don't keep um, extra medicines that are not necessary in your home um, because it's just another setup for your young kids to get into medications. Um, I'm also going to tell you, because this sometimes comes up and people don't think about it when they want their child to take medicine, but they call it candy. Never, ever, ever call medicine candy because sometimes it can look like candy um, and then kids see it and it may be red or they may see something again um, out on the counter and they will take it because they will think it's candy um, when it's not. So please never do that. Um, Talking, I'm also talking a little bit about accidental overdoses, um, not just of someone else's pills, but you know children's medicines as well too. It's also a common reason why kids end up in the ER is because they get too much medication. Um, so again, we, right, we try to flavor medications, um, anti-fever medications, pain medications um, to taste well so we can get kids to take them. But the downside to that is then they sort of like it and if they see the bottle out, um, they'll try to take it because it tastes so good too. So you always want to make sure that you never leave the bottles out on the counter. I'm going to tell you, even if the phone rings, um, if the doorbell rings, let the person wait. The most important thing um, is to put the medication away. Same thing with cleaning um, products and fluids, which I'm going to get to in a second as well too. But you never want to leave medications out. Um, you also always want to make sure you know the correct dosage. Um, so it's great to have sort of, I call it a cheat sheet, right? You can keep it, um, ask your pediatrician um, and keep it in your, in your kitchen or in your bathroom how much to give. Um, you don't know how many times uh, I'll ask a parent how much medicine they, they gave their child and they say, oh, I gave them a tablespoon. And I said, are you sure you gave them? Like, yes, I gave them a tablespoon. But usually most medications, it's a teaspoon and a teaspoon and a tablespoon are very different. Um, a tablespoon is actually three times the dose of a teaspoon. So you really, one, have to know what you're giving or what the caregiver is giving. Always best to use um, the dosage instrument that comes with the medicine, whether it's a medicine dropper or the cup, um, or it's a special dropper. Um, but know exactly what you give them, write it down, um, so you don't give them too much medication. Um, so that's really important too. Um, and so then when it comes with other things um, besides medications, we're talking about poisonings at home. So there are things like um, cleaning fluids and detergents, and you probably have heard this in the news, but I'm going to bring it up because I still see it, um, that like detergent pods, right? We want always things to be so much easier now um, for our lives because we're so busy. But we want to make sure those detergent pods, they're so bright colors and they're pretty looking and kids see them and they often then want to put them in their mouth and they eat them and they can get then um, irritation they can to their throats. Um, they can get pneumonias, they can cause seizures, they can get uh, irritation in their eyes. So again, cleaning products, again, never keep them underneath and you always want to keep or you want to keep them really high up where kids can't get to them. Um, same thing if for dishwasher. Um, cleaners as well too. Now they come in these little plastic pods that again look like candy that kids may want to eat. So you have to keep them away. Do not keep them under the sink. If you do um, keep the under under the sink and under the cabinets locked, but I prefer not to even keep them there as well too. Um, a tip that I just always tell all of my patients is, you know, have an area, have a drawer that your kids though can go into that's um, you know underneath one of the cabinets that's filled with all fun things that they like. You'd be surprised. They like to play with pots and pans and Tupperware. 
um, and containers. And so things in there that they can play with while you're cooking or while you're in the kitchen. Um, so they'll be less likely to go um, where the detergents or um, other poisonous household um, cleaners and cleansers may be. Uh, you also want to make sure that you always keep um, everything labeled in its correct container. So sometimes people are trying to put things in plastic containers. And again, this can be very confusing to kids, right? So they may think, um, they may see a water bottle or a clear bottle and it's filled with fluid. So they may think it's um, apple juice or they may think it's Gatorade or something. And it's not because you put other cleaning fluids. So never put cleaning fluids or, or anything um, of a cleaning nature in a different container. It can be very confusing um, for kids. And again, it's more of a setup then. Um, for accidents and overdose poisonings as well too. Um, let me think if there's anything else. As I said, um, always take your time. You know, your child and their safety is, is the most important. Again, if that doorbell rings, you know, just let it ring. You'll have to, they'll have to wait. Or if someone calls you, you can just call them right back. But anything that you leave out on the counter, you may forget about it um, or, or you're talking on the phone. So really, um, whenever it is a poisonous substance, um, that a child can get into, you know, really concentrate, and that is really um, your first priority. Um, let me think of some other things. Oh, there are um, other poisons at home that can be really dangerous. Um, button batteries, so right, so remote controls are really another are one thing. But anything that has, um, if there is um, hearing aids, anything with these small batteries, children like to put everything in their mouth, and they just may not know. And that can be really dangerous. So anytime swallowing of any kind of battery, it can get stuck, it can get corroded throughout the GI system. Um, that's important to right away to go um, to the emergency room and to have that checked out too. Same thing for magnets. So magnets are really scary to me as a pediatrician. Um, there's many um, toys now that have very small magnets. They may not even be for young children, but you may have it from another child. But these magnets, especially if, you, if they swallow them or eat them, um, if they have two of them, right, they can actually attract because magnets can attract. And then again, you can have um, a twisting of your intestine that can be very severe. So again, anytime there's any thought that a magnet may have been swallowed, again, that's um, an emergent situation where your child should be evaluated right away. Um, and I always tell parents every night um, just to get into that habit of doing what I call like the couch check. And that's like looking for any little objects, um, not just poisonous things, but anything that they can, they can put in their mouth. Um, coins, um, Barbie shoes, toys, Polly Pockets, um, any hairpins, barrettes, anything that a child can put in their mouth that they can then obviously choke on um, as well too is just important. So that nighttime um, check of anything that may have gotten into the cushion seat that may have fallen out of somebody's pockets is important to check as well too. Um, another home product that you may not have thought of that I'm going to bring up is hand sanitizer, right? So we're sort of, st even though today's the first day of spring, we're still seeing this cold weather and lots of germs and kids being sick um, that often we're in a rush and we use hand sanitizer, which can be great helping to decrease germs, um, especially during flu season. But now hand sanitizers, like everything else, there's such a market for them. And so they make them smell nice. They make them in pretty bright colors. They make them in pretty containers. And so this, again, it draws attention to a young child's eye. And they're like, wow, this smells good. And they start playing with it. Um, they, they are fruit flavored and, and peppermint flavored. And then they eat them. And many of these hand sanitizers, the way they work is that they have a high alcohol content. And that obviously can be very detrimental. It's, it's great for, to put on your skin to prevent germs, but you're not supposed to be ingesting it. So if you ingest it, um, again, it can be very irritating. It can cause seizures. It can cause respiratory issues. So again, hand sanitizers, great to use if necessary to prevent germs, but we to make sure that it's always with an adult around, especially when there's children, um, because actually that's a potential poison um, as well too. And then um, just want to talk a little bit about um, plants. Uh, there are so many different kinds of plants and obviously people like to have plants and flowers in their home, but many of them can have some from mild to severe um, interactions, especially um, if ingested. And again, kids are not doing it on purpose, but they're learning to crawl around, they're toddling, they're walking around, they're cruising. They may then just put the leaves in their mouth um, and that can be really, really um, poisonous. 
So it's probably a good idea if you have plants in your home where you think that kids can actually reach them. Um, so you can even Google it or look it up, but things like ivy and lily, um, there's many, many plants that actually can be um, dangerous uh, substances. So I think it's just important um, to know that because um, you may not think that they're toxic. People always are just worried about the berries um, on plants. Um, some are toxic, some aren't. Um, but as I said, um, philodendron, oleander, those can definitely be um, poisonous um, to young children as well if they're ingested. So again, not to scare you, but if you do have questions, you know, ask your pediatrician. You can look that up um, on online. Even at the um, horticultural plant store, you can find out more about which plants may be safer to have in your home, not just actually for your kids, but also for your pets as well too. Um, and then just lastly, um, if they do have anything um, that they've ingested that you are unsure of, this is my major tip of most importance, I think, is to know the number for poison control. You should either know it by heart, you should put it in your phone, you should hang it all over your house, so you have it, your babysitter has it, anyone else has it. But that number is 1-800-222-1222. 1-800-222-1222. Whenever you have an ingestion that you're worried about, call poison control. I even tell my patients who have, you know, they, they can reach me almost all the time and they can call my office or they can reach me um, in other ways as well too. Um, that the best thing to do is to call poison control because that's what I'm going to have to do. So call them right away. If you have the bottle of what they have, that's important. If you can tell them how much you think that they, they may have ingested, that's important too. And they will let you know what to do um, depending on what it is. Um, you may end up having to go to the emergency room, but the first thing I would do would be call poison control. What you don't want to do, which is just as important, is to use syrup of Ipecac. Never buy syrup of Ipecac. Don't have it in your house because if you buy it, then you're going to want to use it because you're going to have this overwhelming urge as a parent to try to help your child. But you don't want to use syrup of Ipecac, and I'm going to tell you why. Because sometimes it's contraindicated, meaning sometimes you shouldn't use it. You can actually make things worse. So if there's something that's caustic um, or it can be um, cause more burns, that making um, your child throw up actually can cause more damage to um, them um, in their throat by making it come back up. So the first thing you want to do is call poison control. I prefer all my patients not to buy syrup of Ipecac because um, you want to do whatever they tell you and to get to the nearest hospital if you have a severe ingestion. So I'm Dr. Jen and this is National Poison uh, Prevention Control Week and I hope that some of these tips were helpful. I hope that you understand um, that my job as a pediatrician is to really help protect your child to prevent accidents. We talked a lot about how to prevent accidents um, because they can occur when we least expect them, but they also do occur when we're outside of our routine. And so we have to be more vigilant at those times with our kids. Um, and if you want more information, not just on safety, but on nutrition and on caring for your baby, what to do when they're sick, how to prevent them from getting sick, um, vaccines, sleeping, nutrition, you name it. Um, go to my website, drjen.com. You can get more information about pediatrician in your pocket, my e-course that's a comprehensive video guide for parents just like you to have all the information you need at your fingertips 24-7 answering those questions that you have and even may not even know that you need answered. So everything that you need right at your fingertips. Pediatrician in your pocket. And thanks so much for being with me uh, on What's Up Wednesday. Any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will answer them and get back to you. Love suggestions about other topics you may want to know about on What's Up Wednesday. I'm Dr. Jen. Thanks and have a great day.